I'm Ken Rockwell, and Harry Langdon, the iconic photographer, was gracious enough to invite me into his home, and we were talking about creativity, and how half the youth of today would rather sit around and watch YouTube, like right now, and then when the video's up, they'll just go on to watching the next video, and I was talking about how, back when I was a kid, how one of some of the stupid things I did was I said, gee, why don't I make a model rocket out of just the Estes rocket engine? So I very carefully glued the little fins on it. I took some solder and took a nail and attached the nail to the front of the rocket engine. And then what if I like very carefully filed the nail off to be super sharp? And then I was dumb enough to put it on my little launcher and fired at the tree across my backyard thinking, oh, this is going to be really smart. And I wish we had iPhones back then to video this because what happened was is this rocket takes off going down towards a tree, but of course it was totally unstable. So what did it do? It turned around 180 degrees and started coming back to me. Oh. And I thought it was gonna be my last day on Earth because this thing was coming right to me. It missed me and it went boom, behind me into our above ground pool. And the nail poked in through the steel and no. the plastic liner. And I'm like, uh-oh, dad's gonna kill me now. So what do I do? Don't do this. I pulled it out, and they're like, uh-oh, now it's leaking. What am I gonna tell my dad? Back in the good old days, we would do that. We'd take our bicycles and drive them over things, and Harry and I were talking about creativity and how inspired he was by making model airplanes and seeing there's something I flew, and today I like putting my stuff out there and just seeing it on the internet. It doesn't have to be necessarily on a, a newspaper or magazines. Harry has been shooting for over 60 years professionally. What still gets Harry up every day to go off and create more? Well, the satisfaction of seeing what you created on the internet it used to be getting a paper print made, mm -hmm. this, uh, developing it in the acids and stuff. But now seeing it on the internet for the whole world to see, and so uh, that that is very satisfying. Something you created with your own hands. And so I'd like to talk more about the technology and the cameras and I'm really very well versed on it. A lot of people get bored and I see them falling asleep <laughs> when I'm talking about, you know, strobes and F stops and shutter speeds and and all sorts of the reciprocity failure. Oh I hate reciprocity failure. <laughs> because that means can I interject here? What, what that is, reciprocity meant reciprocal, meaning if you close your aperture down by a little bit, you have to make a longer exposure, like the same amount of light in. The only problem is when it gets really dark and you're making a long exposure of five seconds, 10 seconds, you don't get five or 10 seconds worth of exposure. Maybe you get one second's worth. So as the exposures get longer and it gets darker, you can't get away with just a 10 second exposure like we do on digital. You'd maybe have to make a three minute long exposure to get enough light to be the equivalent of only 10 seconds. It was horrible. See, that's a very important feature, but a lot of people start going to sleep when you talk about that. So, yeah. and so uh, to do with lighting, the strobes and fluorescent light versus daylight, and a lot of that I enjoy talking about. And so, I mean, I was a gadgeteer in photography in the beginning. I, I love the, um, the whole, the thing about the strobes and the cameras and f-stops and when I then all of a sudden a subject a human being would come in and I go uh oh now I've got to start communicating with them and so I felt really comfortable in the dark room it's really exciting you know for me making prints and so so but the uh, the camera technology is something that we could really talk about for for days and so I try to keep it simple though for me when I'm shooting photographing people I try not to be preoccupied with if I'm shooting at the right f-stop the right color balance I have that all programmed in ahead of time because if you get somebody real famous like a president of the United States in front of you sitting in front of you and you're in front of the camera going Wait a minute, I thought it was on F-16 and it's on 20, you know. Mm -hmm. Can't do it, you can't go out there with light meters and things like that, all that has to be done. In fact, the real elite clients that I have, they'll hire a model the day before the photo session and you go in with F-stops and light meters and you get it all programmed in. And so, uh, that, you know, but obviously, we can get too, I used to get really caught up in the technology. It was real fun to see, you know, play with the cameras and the lights and everything. Then it got to be more where my focus had to be on the subject matter. So all that I have to 
just you from instinct and past experience. And by the way, <clears throat> I, <laughs> I have an advantage is that I can afford to hire an assistant. The assistants usually are t techie guys that are just love the cameras and they, they're watching quite often. They're standing, not looking at the subject, they're standing right next to me and they're watching me twirl the f-stops, they're watching the shutter speeds, how much, uh, you know, how many shots you shot, and that they're, they're really a wonderful group of people, the assistants. So when I bring in an assistant, quite often it's two assistants. One of them's working with strobes and all that, the other one's watching the camera. Then another subject, and another, anyway. So having the, to be able to afford an assistant is a real luxury, but that's partly why these pictures come out <laughs> so good. I got assistants that helped me do all that, mm -hmm. you know. So, but I have to know basically how to do it all myself. Well, you're too kind. I think what makes Harry's work so brilliant is is that he's brilliant, and it's ideas that come from his imagination and make it into these prints. Because it's not just the camera. Because the people coming into a studio don't just magically pose and think of interesting props or positions or backgrounds or, or what they're holding or what they're wearing. It's because Harry has had to think all this through, mm -hmm. which is how Harry has created the icons which, which were our history. In fact, the question... I, oh, I, go ahead. I have to watch the fashion trends. Are people wearing bell bottoms again? Are people wearing high-waisted pants or are they way down around the rear end? I have to watch what's trendy. And also, interestingly enough, I, there's colors that people they're using in magazines and in, in the um, medium that are more happening colors. I notice yellow is starting to happen at this point in time. For another point in time, it was um, it was lavender, you know. So it was another. so. What I have to do when I do a photo session, let's say for an album cover. I have to sort I figure when I do the, the photo session for the album cover, that picture isn't going to be seen for a couple months. So I have to figure out in a couple months, are they going to be wearing bell bottoms again? <laughs> and are they going to be offended by lavender or yellow backgrounds? So it's, it's interesting. You have to watch for fashion trend. What's politically correct, by the way? and what you can do with photographing women that are in kind of skimpy clothes and whether that's okay or not. Hairstyles, by the way, hairstyles change. So I have to study, I don't have to study verbatim that stuff, but I usually watch you know, fashion trends where women are wearing curly hair or straight hair now. Are women cutting off? Okay. So it's usually women and, and guys too, by the way, guys are wearing partial beards now which a few years ago <laughs> where they had to be clean shaven. Well, look at the athletes now are almost all wearing beards. And, and so they look a little shabby, I think. But uh, so I have to watch, those are things I have to watch, just like the choice of cameras that I use, I have to make sure I'm using. The, the, by the way, clients come in and they'll go, what kind of camera are you using? <laughs> And I go, uh oh, uh, they know. <laughs> they know good cameras from bad cameras. You know, and they look at the strobes and they look at this and they, they there are so many photographers, really good top New York photographers, that they know the pictures that came out best were done with a certain kind of camera, really? certain kind of strobes certain kind of umbrella, maybe fill light, ring lights, ring lights are really happening again. Mm -hmm. And I went through it. <laughs> we go, as photographers, we go in and out of ring light periods. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden there'll be a new generation of go, oh, look at this, this is really cool. <laughs> you know, a ring light. Until they get a, a, a famous subject when you're photographing and they're looking in the camera but surrounding the lens is this real bright ring light, and it goes bow at 800 watts second. Ouch, that's and a lot, by the way. What they do <laughs> is I've had people come as Victoria Principal, and people will say, it's so weird, when you use that light. Yeah, it's like, please, oh, no, oh, I see. it's like the brightest flash you can imagine, like right in your face, you don't want that. It comes back, yeah, and so uh, ring lights are, are trendy kind of lighting, and so one has to avoid trendy 
features, you know, trendy kind of lights, and so you know, I have to watch, watch out for that. Eventually, I've done my share of infrared photography, solarization. I've done all the the fun stuff to do, and I've infrared film and photograph with um, uh, sort of infra, ultraviolet transmission filters. Mm. You name it, <laughs> I've tried it. And so, uh, but you get it out of your system, so to speak, until you go back to the center of yourself again using uh, basic camera techniques and lighting that always works. Because let's say when you've got a president of the United States coming, you can't experiment around and say, today I think mm, I'll try, <laughs> try ultraviolet filters on my camera. It'll look, make really great skin, you know. You, you can't experiment. So. But there, there are days when I will go outside and I use, uh, you know, uh, filters that will make the polarizing filters, and which are really neat to use. And I use polarizing filters a great deal, by the way. But they get got in the way, and you lose a couple of f-stops. Mm -hmm. And so I've done all of that gadget gadgetry, and uh, it's it's fun. It's just something you can do. Uh, in your spare time, mm -hmm. but right now my time is so valuable, as we all know, just uploading the images up and, and downloading them, the, and they get requests. We get requests from around the world for my photographs, and there are certain demands. One of them is they want them tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. and let's say in London, you go, oh, okay. Then they make sure the resolution is such and such. And make sure you know there's you uh, omit the the grain and the, and other increase the contrast and so I had to be prepared overnight to use a lot of Photoshop techniques. What I've learned, you know, I love Photoshop because it's just like I used to do an art school, an art class, and and doing and intensifying the blacks. I used to use India ink when I was mm -hmm. doing watercolor and intensify the outline edges. Mm -hmm. Now you can go in with selective colors in mm -hmm. Photoshop, choose black, and bang, you could you can increase the outlines. And so anyway, I'll get into that on another day when you have more time. Yeah, I'm thinking a video that Harry and I should do together is I won't get into it now, but Harry and I both love strobes. And I realize most of you watching have no idea what a strobe is because you're all doing video and you're all doing YouTube. And when you think of ring light, you think of this continuous round thing that goes around your iPhone. But when he was talking about 800 watt seconds, that's a big power pack. And that's what would be 800 watts for one continuous second, that much energy, poof, off in an instant right in your face. And that's a flash, totally different. And for shooting still photos, that's the way to go. For shooting video, use continuous light, but for shooting still photos, Apparently, we just discovered over lunch we're both fans of strobes. So that could be another day's discussion. Well, quite often I will have to photograph not just one person. I may have to photograph three people in a group, okay? The main person is in the foreground on that mark on the floor. The second person may be a foot and a half behind that person. The third person may be four feet behind them. Okay, now we're on our camera and we're making decisions <laughs> about depth of field. And when we have, it's okay when you're shooting a portrait and you can just photograph on their eyes or on their nose, like old school stuff and get their ears out of focus. Now we have to stop down at that's when we have to go to heavier uh, watt seconds. So I have to, when I get my strobes out, I have to be prepared to be able to photograph a thousand watt seconds. You know, it, it, it may be, and maybe a subject that likes to go, okay, well you had a lot of fun today. And they'll lean in and out of the, out of the mm -hmm. camera range and you can't say, wait a minute, hold still. They are not people that hold still. Mm -hmm. And they, and I could back up and go with them. So one has to be a zoom in and zoom out. So to have to make sure the f-stop is small enough where I could carry the depth of field at least for a couple of inches. Anyway, I used to shoot a lot of still lifes with the eight by 10 view camera. And talk about depth of field problems with the eight by 10 view camera. <laughs> 
and tilting the backs and all that. That's a whole other subject. It is, and that's another one of the huge advantages of strobes versus continuous light is a strobe, which is a flash. And we're not talking about little flashes. We're talking about these monster things that plug into the wall. <laughs> when he was talking about getting depth of field, what he's talking about is is the strobes, studio strobes, give enough light that you can stop down to f11 or f22 or whatever you need, and that. You're also shooting at a low ISO, ISO 64, ISO 100, and because they're an instantaneous burst of light, even if somebody's moving around, they're not gonna be blurred. With a continuous light, which means a fluorescent or an LED or even tungsten back in the old days, with these LED lights people are happy about, then you're shooting at F4, and you're shooting at ISO 400, and you're using maybe a 30th of a second exposure, then you've lost everything. So strobes, you know, we should definitely do a talk about strobes someday. Yeah, it's become a wonderful asset to me because a lot of my sessions involve groups, recording mm -hmm. groups, and there'll be a very undisciplined group of some <laughs> women or men. I don't want to be, you know, both of them. Gender, okay, <laughs> yeah. And so there'll be five guys who don't want to stand still. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stand in back now, and then you know, but you were in front. And, and so my depth of field is very important. Like there's no tilting of the back like the view <laughs> camera days. Now you just have to step down far enough. Plus, how about this? How about the subjects are moving, moving around? And so then I, uh, even with strobes, you can get a blurred image. Uh, by the way, sorry, but dyno lights are a very slow flash duration. Mm -hmm. The spark of the flash is quite slow, where Normans are, and Speedotrons, the flash duration is bow, real quick. Mm -hmm. So you can be waving your camera like this when you're shooting, and or the subject can be jumping, or a golfer can be golfing, and you'll freeze the action, mm -hmm. you know, and so uh, that's a whole other subject with, um, you know, ch choice of shutter speed, even though, mm -hmm. but you can't with, <laughs> most cameras you can't go below 250th, Mm -hmm. of, of, or it's a 175, I think, and then otherwise it cuts into the frame. So one has to just be real savvy about that. That's the whole. Yeah, thing. Harry's talking about flash sync speed, and when I said instantaneous burst, I was lucky because my Novatrons, which were inexpensive, poof, it's it's whatever it is, it's short enough that I've never had a blurry shot. But he's talking about was it Dynatrons? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently their impulse is actually a longer flash, which is not instantaneous, which has other disadvantages or advantages. But yeah, another day's, another day's video. I can think probably we'll be getting on that. We got to figure out who's bringing the strobes to the, to the house here. <laughs> That's another day.